the precariat, the long-suffering class that has lost its will to fight. Amongst the paradoxical concomitants to the condition of precarity are the extreme singularity and radical individualization of its subjects, its heterogeneous and versatile, mobile and unstable, with no continuity or consolidated consciousness. The unifying characteristic of the precariat seems to consist purely in the negative as in the absence of stable long-term contracts and existential security and, therefore, as a never-ending oscillation between employment and unemployment, between inclusion in or exclusion from civic participation. In fact, precarity, even at the semantic level, is predicated upon a lack of something. It alludes to everything that, by virtue of the instability to which it is subjected, is at risk of being ostracized and condemned to a state of constant insecurity. The condition of precarity has purely negative connotations premised upon all that is lacking and non-existent stability, protections, employment and labor welfare guarantees, projects that are not financially feasible, long-term projects, ethic ethicality of the bourgeois and proletarian phase, the situation of mass disenfranchisement. All these factors contribute to making the formation of class consciousness difficult, even merely creating a collective narrative, a common story in the first-person plural, detached from the isolated ego in the individualized society of unsocial sociability, bears the neo-Darwinian stamp. This is why today, in the time of the degree zero of social ex expectations, Class narratives scarcely venture beyond the simple annals of personal existential tragedy. We are presented with accounts of the precariat condition that opts for the paradigm of vic victimhood. We are introduced to individuals with no mention of class, living wasted lives and suffering existential anguish. They are never conceived as integral part of a class that beyond suffering flexible exploitation also offer a potentially radical challenge to the order of flexible accumulation. This pension for victimistic self-pity invariably prevails over the determined revolutionary tendency of class antagonism. Once again, this reveals the ideological subalternity of the afflicted and insignificant precariat mass class. Private misfortune aside, the practical resolution of systemic contradictions is achieved through social transcendence. Regrettably, there seems no end to autobiographical accounts by hypertrophic individuals who, in a style posed between comedy and tragedy, relay their lamentable story of precariat misadventure invariably presented as personal hardship without taking into account systemic contradictions. In conclusion, it is worth reiterating that it is incumbent upon the precariat to be res resourceful and resilient and able to overcome obstacles by himself, but in order to solve systemic contradictions, transcendence and transformations are needed. Neoliberal individualizations, the privatizations of the social life, and the dissolution of class bonds and communal solidarity appear from the outset to undermine the possibility of a concerted political response to the uninterrupted offensive of the globalist masters and their guards. Philosophical counseling and the psychoanalyst's coach seem to have substituted the political party and human rights movements. Hence, all too frequently, precarious workers, humiliated and mortified, do not respond with the kinds of massive class-wide solidarity such as prolonged strikes or production stoppage, that is, with effective instruments and the successful results achieved therefrom.